Hello lovely people, remember these horns? I have a little update on them. So if you haven't watched, I have a previous video about these Image Dynamics mini horns that I bought recently and I have a little update on them. So a lot of people online when I posted this recommended to replace the compression drivers or something else because these are apparently uh, the piezo, they're like the worst and it's nothing good with them. So I didn't want to invest a lot of money because it's, you know, just for experiments. And again, thank you for my patrons and supporters that directly uh, support me on PayPal. Without you, I couldn't buy these and I couldn't buy these. So I was browsing uh, Facebook Marketplace, eBay and stuff and I found these. So these are Celestian uh, compression drivers. They cost brand new, I think uh, 100, 120 pounds each. And I got them for a very good deal. I paid 50 pounds for both of them. So mega cheap. And these are supposed to be a neodymium magnet and it, they act as a similar to a tweeter. So they're very compact. There's a throat, there's some kind of a mesh or something. And I will be comparing how these compare to the original CD E1 V2s. So one of them was faulty because if you remember during my testing, I said that one of the horns kind of crackles and stuff. And when I measured distortion, one of them was like over 5%. So it was this one. And it was because it is glued. Yeah, so it was like this. And when I opened it up, so this specific one, this one is, I don't know, maybe it overheat or something. It kind of bent. It's bent. So, yeah. And this one does this as well. And I think that caused the distortion. Because you can take it apart. There's a paper cone in there. And it just crackles and stuff. So I think this was the issue with this driver. Because I put uh, the spare ones that I had, the new ones and i inspected them i took everything apart and there was no issues with them i did measure the distortion i'm going to show you there's no issues whatsoever so i did determine a crossover point for these about a thousand hertz 24 db uh, optimal everything below that uh, the distortion rises so now it's going to be very interesting to compare these with the celestian drivers that i put there they fit perfectly there's no issues there. One inch throat, uh, you cannot see in there. There's that mesh that you can see. Uh, I put a little gasket in between the compression drive and the horn because for these, it was like this paper. But this paper is very hard uh, because it's already aged. It's probably glued on or something. So I don't think it acts as a gasket anymore. So I removed that paper and i just put a little thin ccf gasket and now it seals properly so in this video what we're going to do is i'm going to compare the frequency response and the distortion between these two drivers because we saw with these we have some very nasty dips and peaks around seven six kilohertz and i was wondering is it because of this piezo driver or is it because of the characteristics of the horn itself because you know there's stuff happening inside so i did remeasure these ones i have the same frequency response the frequency response didn't change between the faulty one and the good one the only difference is as i mentioned the distortion at the lower end this has less distortion because obviously it's it's good now the interesting part is going to be comparing with these are these gonna measure better because if we're going to have the same uh, peaks and dips that means that they are caused not by the compression driver but by the horn itself now these compression drivers, they're very similar to speakers uh, price-wise. So these are quite cheap budget because you can get uh, one inch compression drivers for like 300 pounds each, which would be like a very good mid-range, like 600 pounds for two mid-ranges. Yeah, compression drivers are expensive as well. They can be, but these are kind of cheap. So off to measuring, we're gonna measure the frequency response, the distortion, we're gonna determine the optimal crossover points for these because these uh, in the spec sheet, they say cross them at about two kilohertz at 12 dB. So we're gonna see if we can cross them a bit lower. We're gonna see how sensitive they are compared with the piezo. And then 
I'm going to put them in the car. Uh, again, semi-permanent install, and we're going to run fully active, and we're going to tune it. So I'm not going to tune these, I think, because I think that these, the Celestian ones, they're better, and they're going to perform better, and they're going to sound better. So it's just for comparison, I'm going to compare these, but then I'm going to just disregard these. I'm going to put the Celestians, and we're going to see how they measure in the car. Is there going to be differences? And we're going to tune it, and see if they sound any good. So stay tuned. Okay, measurement time. So I have exactly the same like last time, nothing special, just a microphone like a meter away and sweeps. So this is the old one, the original one in image dynamics, uh, compression driver, you can see all of these uh, peaks and dips. They're very, very nasty. Uh, so this is the old one. The new one with the same crossover point looks like that. So we have identical everything here. So these, uh, between 2 and 3K, is caused by the horn, probably because they're the same for both drivers. This dip as well there, but the top end is totally different. So this, I think, can be like breakup of the piezo element or like paper cone because it is a paper cone in there something like that and this the new one it's much much smoother so if i'm going to remove the old like that so you see the new one has a much smoother frequency response it does go like trend to go down but if you put a very shallow slope like 6 db it's going to take all of this out and it's going to be much much smoother response compared to the old one, which was this. Now, uh, one thing I noticed, I did the measurements on exactly the same level. So I, I didn't check the actual voltage, but you can see it's about like 95 dB, 95 to 100 dB. Because they're horns, they're loud, I wanna test them very, very loud. And when I just swap the drivers, like literally disconnect the wire, put the new one, put it in, didn't change the power or anything. I got this. So the new drivers, the Celestians, are 8 to 10 dB louder on the same power. And I was like, I almost got deaf. That's 105 dB. It's ear piercing. It's extremely, extremely loud. So I had to tone it down uh, quite a lot to have the same level. Now, let's have a look at the distortion. Uh, let's maximize it just like that. So, uh, I was playing with different crossover points. So, this was the old driver, the original Image Dynamics. And we can see that uh, this is 1000 Hz, 24 dB. And we have rising distortion with the higher frequencies. We have lows like 5% here, just because of the response as well. We have this peak here. So, it corresponds with this. If I was lowering the crossover points, so that's 900 and that's 800, you see this kind of rises up. But the thing is, um, with the lower crossover points, I'm not gaining any SPL at all. So this is 900, this is 800. You see, you're gaining a little bit of 1K, but above that, you're not gaining anything. And here, it doesn't matter at all. So those 2 dB, it's just not worth having it because you're going to have much more distortion, half percent versus two percent. So there's no point in crossing them very low. So yeah, a thousand hertz for the old one. Now the distortion for the new one, the Celestian, exactly the same crossover, same slope and the same level. So when they were matching the level as well. So because uh, I want to test at the same loudness level. And we can see that the bottom end is exactly the same. Everything is the same. The difference in distortion comes above 3K where the old one has loads is like above 5%. Whereas the new one has much, much less. So it's less distortion at higher frequencies. However, at the same time, there's low, uh, lower level as well at those frequencies. Now, if I'm gonna compare the new driver, so that's a thousand hertz, 900 hertz, and 800 hertz crossover. And again, we have rising distortion at the bottom end. So we can cross them at 800, but then at 600, I'm gonna have 2% distortion, so it's kind of pointless because this, at 1K, the distortion doesn't change that much and the level 
uh, doesn't change much as well. Uh, let me put the new ones. That's the old, old, old. 900 new, 1000 new, and 800 new. So, yeah, like at 1k and above, where this part of what matters, there's no point of crossing it them at 800 because I'm not going to gain much at all. It's just the orange line. So it's kind of pointless. So I'm going to keep the crossover at 1k because with 1k, um, I'm going to remove this and this. The distortion is kind of normal. So it doesn't it doesn't rise and it's totally fine. So I think 1k crossover point for this uh, driver is perfectly good. If I'm going to look at this one as well. So this is just noise, so it is what it is, but we can see that it is dominated by the second harmonic. Everything is second harmonic, and the third one is much lower, especially at higher frequencies, whereas the old driver, the original one, you can see that second and third uh, is kind of the same, and it's very, the third one especially, it's very, very high. So in theory this should uh, place nicer so this measurement is on the much much higher power uh, same power but much higher level you can see the distortion is higher but again second harmonic dominated third harmonic lower so these celestian drivers uh, i think they're gonna sound much much nicer and better compared to the oh my god almost dropped it compared to the old these ones so yeah i'm not gonna play with these at all i'm just gonna replace it i'm gonna put these ones and i'm gonna install it in my car and we're gonna tune it actively i still need to figure out what's the problem with the woofer in my car because that woofer doesn't play but yeah same crossover point a thousand hertz 24 db they're gonna play down to thousand hertz and these gonna sound much nicer than these just because of the top end less jaggedness and uh less distortion at the higher frequencies but these are so loud so it's gonna be fun let me install them let's tune it and let's have some fun okay so have the horns kind of installed again now no nothing so i use the metal brackets and just just shove it in so it is there uh, it's not gonna fall out it's not permanent, but it's not going to fall out. So for testing, it's going to be perfect enough. Now, since I'm going to be running active, the door and that, I hijack the wires from the mid base and the mid range. So the mid range is going to go to this one and the mid base, the state is going to go to this one. And I will have still available tweeters if I need them. But this is something like this. So the problem with this was that somehow the negative lead uh, disattached from the speaker, I don't know how, so I just took it out, put the wire back in and everything is fine. Let me show you the other side. It's very similar. Again, this one just has a hook that goes in there and that one just shoved in there. And from the inside, oh, see, exactly, a hook. Yeah, note to self, try not to kick it. If I would be driving, Oh, there's barely, barely room for my feet. No, this is not going to be a driving. This is not for my car. Definitely not for my car. I literally have... Yeah, for the brake pedal and for the gas. Nah, just for testing, not for driving. Ah, oh, fell off again. But yeah, something like this. So now I'm going to measure the response, try to tune it with the mid-base and just see what happens. Okay, guys, so I tuned it. I'm going to show you everything. And I am extremely, extremely surprised. So I was playing around. I played music and everything. I'm going to show you what I did, how they measured everything. The main difference is the total, like, loudness. These are just ridiculous. So I have this uh, very cheap old SPL meter. And I just for fun try to measure like in my listening position. So <clears throat> I measured up to 112 dB peaks, 112 decibels. Like now my ears are ringing. They are so, so loud. And the mid range is uh, the mid range in the door. They're keeping up uh, at that volume. Uh, they don't sound as nice, but pff, I don't know what does. 
but I'm so surprised they like I don't know okay so technical stuff because again this is all about SQ and everything imaging uh, if you remember before in my previous video what I had the old drivers I did mention that the the stage is like here now I tuned it and I don't know how the stage went up there it's not on the same level like my normal system with my tweets and mids over there it's a tiny bit lower like right right to where the dash is mine is sitting on top of the dash but with these horns everything went up how i have absolutely no idea this is psychoacoustics that we need to kind of figure it out now one thing is that imaging like left and right is not as nice because of the difference response i'm gonna i'm gonna show you and what's happening is the if you imagine like left and right it goes like this is my hard right something like this it doesn't go all the way there and basically the image goes like this and it tapers down so something like this so hard left is lower hard right is higher and it kind of tapers down and i think it's something to do with that uh, because this is the mouth that opens directly into me and that one is you cannot see is hitting kind of behind the wheel so it's like it's something like this uh, the stereo effects are not as nice and not as pronounced as on my normal system because somebody mentioned as well like in, in one of the comments that these horns are not for every car and I agree a hundred percent like for my car the horns don't work yes they are loud they're screaming loud you can burst your eardrums but like for perfect imaging and stuff mm, no really just because I have a lot of stuff here but like in any other car they are so so loud okay let me show you rew very quick so let's go through all the measurements so left and right so these are the horns by themselves and nothing no uh, just a crossover so i put 1k 24 db crossover and nothing else and you can see the left one which is on the passenger side it has a bit uh more uh higher frequencies compared to the right side because here we have the same but here they're differentiate just because it's more off axis and it's under the dash and now when when i played only the left horn uh, I, I got the same feeling as with as i mentioned with the bullet tweeters because it sounded very very harsh because you can see it peaks at 3k there's a big mountain at 3k and that's why uh, they might sound harsh and they did sound harsh the right one not as much because it's not as pronounced but it's still the same so like if you imagine you would have a flat line here there's a massive massive peak at 3k so first when i tuned it i tried to cut it just for fun i thought okay i'm gonna cut it flat from 1k and i'm gonna tune everything like this but then i realized that i'm losing like literally 15 db of level and then it's like what is the point of having horns if you're using losing so much level because i took the measurement so horn horn and i took the measurement of the mid base in the doors which is the it's not the status is the pro audio mid ranges the cheap ones for 20 quid so that's the left one and that's the right one and you can see the level is kind of the same on the horns so i chose a one and a half k acoustical crossover to cross them into the mid base because I, I in the beginning i tried 1k but then this falls off too fast so i had to choose one and a half k so let me see uh, left horn left left horn eq there we go so i eq'd them just a little bit i lost well maybe 4 db so i tried to eq them flat from like one and a half k uh all the way up to eight and they do fall off so you cannot do anything about it the only kind of solution would be to add the tweeters and i do have tweeters i could add them and have that very very top end but it's just for you know so that's the left one and right since it was a bit lower i had uh, this one so let me just untick the left there we go so the right one it was just literally uh, remove this one and just a little bit fix it just boost a little bit here just to have some and after the eq i ended up with this left and right so the left one 
it plays higher up to eight and a half K and the right one which is under my steering wheel it starts to fall off above 6k and there's not much top end that's why i mentioned that like the imaging is not very nice because one obviously it has more level here than the other one the solution would be take the left one and uh, pull this down so maybe put like a low pass filter just like 6 db maybe or something just to bring this down or maybe a shelf shelf filter would work better and maybe that would sound nicer so this this and then the base the pro audio mid ranges so that's the left one and i crossed it where is it left bay crossover cross it again close to one and a half k and left base eq something like this so just a little bit fixing and i try to boost this area a little bit because of the massive hole but i cannot do anything about it and this peak so that's uh left side ended up like this and right base right base with a crossover and then after eq something like this a little bit of boost a little bit of cut and i ended up left base and right base something like this left and right so yes it's not perfect because these are indoors that's why i have my mid base in the kicks doors are not perfect but it is what it is so if you combine it with the horns left and right you can see the level uh, is matching almost perfectly so there's no need to pull one or the other down because the sensitivity of both is very very high even after eq you're not losing much level which is perfect and then when uh, i sum them time align and everything we have left side the whole side you can see yes there's on the left side there's a hole there and the right side which looks a bit better but uh, i have a hole here so left and right so we have something similar to like an american trend where you have like a sloping down um, frequency response and the top end has the most differences but a tweeter would fix this but the problem is so look let me show you something very very fun and interesting so this is the left side yeah uh on the same power on the same level this is my left tweeter so you can see there is what 51 and 62 more than 10 db difference so these horns and pro audio mid-ranges uh they have 10 decibels more level compared to my alpine status stuff now yes the tweeters of course they're gonna sound nicer because they have more extension and everything but i would never be able to go as loud with my conventional drivers compared to these horns and mid-ranges so yeah left and right tweeter and left and right side with the horns you can see there's a massive massive difference because my whole system is something like like here so you can see there's like there's more than some places 10 sometimes some places more than 10 decibels difference the system is much much louder now what happens if i enable my both of my subwoofers the center console and the ib i have something like this now let me disable everything so yeah let's leave this let's go up a bit something like this and this so you can see that the response uh, let me zoom out yeah the response is as i mentioned like a typical american that everything is going and trending down let me apply some smoothing because it doesn't look that bad let me apply some smoothing to look a bit nicer apply there we go so i have the response kind of trending down and now in my system with the horns and pro audio mid-ranges what i have that uh, i don't have as much uh sub level i want to say so if i'm going to compare like from this i have 70 and uh plus 10 uh not actually uh, down to 30 because i'm looking a bit too low so we have 75 down to 30 hertz and then the main level is like 65 or even lower so only 10 db i do like to have at least 
Now in my current tune, I have 15 dB plus on the sub level uh, at 30 Hertz. So yeah, now I don't have enough subwoofers. If I would want to match uh, the pro audio mid ranges and horns with a sub level, I don't have enough. So this, when I'm parked, when I was listening, like in my driveway, is perfectly enough, not a problem at all. But with uh, when I'm driving, I would need more sub. I have more sub, uh, IB sub. I could raise it up by three, four, five dB. No issue there. The problem is the center console sub. That one is kind of maxed out already. So yeah. And I guess this is a very typical problem that everybody that does like very loud systems encounter that there's always a bottleneck somewhere and something is not enough. With my um, normal Alpine Stator system with the mid-bass and kicks and everything, my bottleneck is this mid-bass driver because it doesn't have enough level for some reason. Uh, I could get maybe 2 or 3 dB more if that would play a bit higher. But now with these horns and priority mid-ranges, the center console sub is the bottleneck. Because if you think about it, a 10 inch, a single 10 inch is definitely not enough uh, mid-bass wise to keep up with the horns so if i would want to if i would want to keep the horns uh ideally i probably would need uh eight inch mid ranges which i'm eyeing already the one audio eight inch mid ranges because they're not expensive like 150 pounds i would like to have those even in the doors not in the not necessarily in the ib kicks in the doors is totally fine just to have a bit more level so these would be a perfect pair but then i would need more sub level if I would want to keep these horns. Now, ugh, it, it's a shame because I like it. I like the horns. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it straight. I like the horns. And if you would have bullets in there covering up just a very, very top end, like 7K and above, all of this, that would be an ideal uh, setup for extremely, extremely loud listening. But now, again, I don't have enough sub-level. But this was a very interesting experiment. I didn't expect that these horns are gonna sound no, so nice, but again, I did upgrade the compression drivers. They're not original ones. The original ones, they don't sound as good and as nice as these Celestians. And again, there are many better drivers that will play this top end, but <clears throat> again, location, especially this one, the right side, is just there. So I cannot do anything about it. One more thing that I wanted to show you. So now I'm in the passenger side. So in the passenger side is totally different situation than in the drives because I did tune it to the driver's side. So that one is screaming at me. This one, eh, so the center is like somewhere there. And this is the response from the driver's side. So we can see that this one, uh, there's a peak because of that one. Then it kind of dips at one and a half K probably because uh, the time alignment when it was done between these drivers is for that seat and for from these drivers it's for that seat as well so i think these might be cancelling each other out because of the time difference and that one as well maybe and here we have a massive hole at about what 100 hertz so mm, why Probably because, again, uh, door, so driver side null, uh, exactly the same as I have in that door for that seat, I have in this door for this seat. That's what I would imagine. And base, but basically <clears throat> mid base, it doesn't exist in this seat. And I did notice this before as well with my conventional drivers as well, that there's literally no mid base. Uh, and the sub as well is playing here, but this one sub doesn't play that high. It plays, well, yeah, it plays up to 80, 70. So maybe because it's facing this side, it might be out of phase with the mid bases in the doors. But yeah, from the drivers, uh, from the passenger side, with these horns, uh, it's not pleasant. So the passengers are not going to enjoy this sound. It's only for me. <laughs> and again, some commented under my previous video that when you're going to try horns, you don't want to go back to like normal drivers. I kind of tend to agree, to be honest. But the only thing is this car. This car is extremely not suitable to have horns. If I would have a different car or maybe if I could have these horns literally 
in the dash firing up the glass. Mmm, that would be so, so much fun. So these are my impressions. Horns approved. For pure SQ, for pure SQ, I uh, would say no. But for daily listening, for loud daily listening, yes, yes, and definitely yes. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one.